Welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen. Today I need to finish another project. So this is one of the stones from KJ's $50 Lightning Ridge parcel. We've already got one good stone out of it, but we're going to try to get a second one here. The only problem is that you can see here it's quite uneven and there's a sand spot in this top top face here and then across in the bottom one there's a couple more. So if those clear out we're going to end up with a nice little stone. Of course we'll take the back end and everything for him, but it does have a very very nice rolling colour across the entire face. Sometimes a bit yellow, sometimes a bit green, and then in the other direction a bit blue, so definitely some colour. And we're just going to try to get what we can out of it, because this one is probably the flashiest of all the stones. You can see here that it's uh, bouncing off and projecting the colour onto my finger, which is a, a good sign. Whenever you see that, you're happy days. So we'll just try to scrub it up and see how it goes. In terms of the process, it's just going to be a sintered diamond to get the shape right and we'll take the back off towards the end. I want to leave it on for as long as possible because holding it like this and getting a nice grip with that backing is really good for carving. Otherwise, if I take it in straight away, I'm going to have to dop it. So I'd rather just leave that and use this as my dop stick. So we'll just do the sintered diamond to try to get rid of those sand spots. We might not fully get rid of the sand spots with the center diamonds. If these ones down here don't come out, then we're going to have to bring that edge in. Hopefully they do come out and we can get a get a fairly nice little stone. It should be about the same size as the first one we cut for him. But this time we've got a nice crystal, whereas his last one was a pretty nice dark opal. So yeah, we'll hit it with the center diamond, hit it with the Novas, see if we can finish off with the final polish and hopefully a nice flashy stone that looks somewhat like that across the whole face. We'll find out pretty soon. All right, stage one, 600 grit sintered diamond. I didn't need to go any coarser than that. 600 is going to get through this stuff pretty quickly and the sand spots are pretty small. Now I'm just working the outside edges just to give it a bit more of an easy hold because there were some jagged bits and pieces. And then just working the face where those sand spots are. You don't really need to get rid of them fully with the 600 grit sintered diamond, but it's not bad to pretty much get through it as long as your color bar is not going to fade away to nothing then you're pretty safe to do it. It's not going to chip too much. The 600 grit sintered diamonds is pretty gentle. Definitely don't do this with the 600 grit electroplated diamond. Electroplated burrs are actually much more aggressive. So then we're switching over to the 280 grit Nova. Here you basically want to get rid of all the sand and finish the shaping. The most important part here, apart from the sand, is to make sure that your shape is just about spot on. You can change it a little bit with the 600, but mostly with the 280. But the other thing you really need to get good at is to make sure that you can hit every surface with the 280 grit Nova, because you're going to use the same shaped point through the stages. You need to make sure that you can actually reach the lowest points and the highest points. Make sure there's no little nooks and crannies you can't get to, otherwise you won't get a nice shine. And you can see that at 600, we're already getting a bit of a bit more color play out of it. It does improve quite a bit as you go through the polishing stages. So with the 600, just final shaping, you can see I'm dealing with the edges just a little bit more, going for a little bit of a teardrop shape, but the top is really uneven, so it's not going to be a standard cab. It's definitely a teardrop shape, but it's also 100% a carving. Now 1200 grit Nova point. Same thing, at this point you should be you should be pretty confident that you're hitting all the surfaces. If not, you're going to have to go backwards. And you're basically starting to get that pre-polish. Getting a bit of a pre-polish on it, making sure that there's no scratches, no chips, nothing like that. It needs to be pretty smooth because otherwise you're just wasting your time with the 3000 grit. And then you just hit it with the 3000, just hit all the surfaces. For some reason, this stone was polishing incredibly quickly. I only spent a couple minutes on each of these stages. I know it's a small stone, but typically it still takes me a little bit longer. This one seemed to really progress through the grits very quickly. And that happens every now and then. I find it happens mostly with crystal opal. And then here we go, hitting it with the cerium oxide. It's not the greatest burr choice that I chose here, this uh, barrel shape. I typically like a bullet shape similar to the Nova points, but this one does, it still gets into every every little aspect that you need to. It helps to have that sharp edge actually to really buff in tight tight corners, but this one doesn't really have any because I've already made sure that the Novas were fine with the surface. And you can see it's getting pretty flashy. 
And finally, just want to take off the back, which was the scariest part, because look how quickly it just crumbled. I didn't realize how sandy and how, how many holes it had in it. It just had so much air. So it was just cutting through sand and air, and it disappears incredibly fast. But we'll talk about that a bit more now. Well, as you can see, the stone does have some color, but it's quite directional. It's one of those bright, flashy ones that bounce off your fingers when you get it in the right position. But that's the thing, it has to be in the right position. From dead square, this is kind of what it looks like. So it's very much a rolling flash. It's a very uneven face as well, so it's actually surprising to me that it flashes all at once, kind of at a reasonable angle like this. Now, it's not every day that the most difficult and scary part of a carving is to actually remove the backing. But in this case, because of that weird, like, corally kind of backing, you can see here, this is all fairly intact potch except for the chips. Well, basically they were just massive holes in the backing. And also here, that's just pure sand. And if you look carefully in the face, you can actually see that the sand touches all the way up to the color bar because there we don't have much left. I don't think this would be the most stable stone ever. It probably can't really be set. I feel like a claw setting would make it crack and a bezel setting is, well, it's tough because it's an undulating face like this, so not even sure if that's even possible. Maybe with a little bit of clever modification, it probably is. It's something that I want to play with when I get into jewelry making. But all in all, I think this might just have to be a stone that sits in a little case for a while. Hopefully it's a, uh, I mean, it was came from a $50 Lightning Ridge Opal parcel, so it's not, you're not expecting top quality gems from it anyway so getting anything really is a bonus and it's the fun you have along the way that's the most important and the learnings you can take because even though this has some nice little color nice bit of rolling flash it's uh yeah it's not the most useful stone ever you can see here how much that chip you can almost see it from directly ahead i went with a little bit of a teardrop like shape as you can see that's it fully front on and that's the end of that so i'm just gonna Package this one up and got to meet up with KJ at some point. Hopefully you like the two stones that we've finished. And there's a couple more there that he can play with. But he's already bought another one of the $50 parcels. So if he uh, if he can nail a few out of that stone after watching this parcel here and how I've tackled it, then I am more than happy with that. So I wish him and you guys a lot of luck. Hopefully you stumble across some very good gems, much better than what I have here. And yeah, stay tuned for more.